our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues. Across the nation, a silent healthcare crisis is very likely affecting people you know. Until recently, this crisis received little attention, and yet it threatens both our health and our economy. It's called chronic disease, and by some estimates, chronic diseases affect nearly half of all Americans. Chronic diseases are conditions that cannot be cured, but they can be managed. They include diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and many others. Why the rise in chronic illnesses? Age and lifestyle choices are important factors. We are getting older as a nation, and fast foods, smoking, and a lack of exercise are taking their toll. So there's this wave of lifestyle um, driven chronic disease that is really showing itself mostly in diabetes. And if you look ahead, uh, people talk about the diabetes bomb. And the combination of the age wave and the growing prevalence of diabetes is what's really scary about the future of American healthcare because these are very costly diseases to treat. Okay, I'd like to go ahead and take your blood pressure. Um, it's been fine, but you know how how concerned I am about maintaining the right pressure with your diabetes and your coronary disease. Yes, okay. And at the same time, the rising cost of health care, coupled with a poor economy, means more people are finding themselves without insurance or access to health care. The patients that come here are just like us on a bad day. They've, they've had some circumstances, they've got laid off. A lot of them have exhausted all their resources before they come to us. So uh, we see people that are awaiting disability, we see people that have laid off, we see people that are working but can't afford to pay for a premium. So uh, these are people just like us, uh, their circumstances are slightly different. A rising tide of illness, increasing costs, fewer insured people, and dwindling resources mean one thing. Many communities around the country are struggling to cope. The reason we want the whole grains is because when you eat these, they last so much longer. One community, however, is finding solutions. In the Williamsburg, Virginia area, an innovative approach to treating chronic disease is producing remarkable results. It's called the Chronic Care Collaborative. Funded by the Williamsburg Community Health Foundation, the collaborative brings together nonprofit healthcare organizations to address the surge of chronic disease. Collaborative members serve the region's uninsured and underinsured patients. This year, the collaborative will treat more than 5,000 uninsured and underinsured patients. Without health insurance, many people ignore their conditions or rely on emergency rooms for their primary care. The chronic care model was developed in mainstream medicine. Translating the chronic care model into the safety net setting was the key innovation here. And, and, and I think an extension of that innovation was taking it across multiple safety net providers, no one of which is capable of producing the entire chronic care model. So people are learning to do the things that they're very good at by themselves, but to collaborate on the things that they don't quite have the capacity to do. So that the innovation and the collaboration that it took to bring the chronic care model into the safety net setting, that, that's been the key um, strategic force over these last several years behind the chronic care project in Williamsburg. Participants meet monthly to share experiences, address challenges, and celebrate successes. They regularly share ideas through an extranet. Like any other industry, yours, mine, or anyone else's, the innovation happens every day in small ways. What these folks are trying to do is capture that knowledge, package it, and share it with each other. These are the types of things that are never going to be published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Okay? They just happen at the clinic level. And it's not always the executive directors or the head physician that is creating these innovations. It could be the nurse practitioner, it could be the healthcare assistant, it could be the office manager. When you systematically capture and spread these things, everybody's able to get better by leveraging off of each other's knowledge. That team approach includes breaking the barriers between medical disciplines and addressing a patient's total health. For instance, since depression often accompanies chronic conditions, one clinic, Colonial Behavioral Health, 
trains staff members from other clinics to recognize symptoms of depression and make referrals. The benefits of this whole health approach can be dramatic. Chris Dyke came to the Gloucester Matthews Free Clinic facing serious issues. He lost his business to the recession. He lost a daughter to lung disease. And then he lost his health to diabetes. At age 40, his diabetes triggered a heart attack. Just relax. <laughs> the clinic taught Chris to manage his illnesses through diet, exercise, and medication. Because of the training provided through the collaborative, they also noticed signs of depression. Those with chronic disease, we now know, um, 40% of those patients sometime in their life will have a major depression secondary to their illness, whatever it is, asthma, heart disease, diabetes. And so we, the foundation, has given us psychiatric trainings for the last two years so that we can identify um, people with depression or um, other psychiatric illness and, and treat it effectively. We've learned to um, be much closer knit with our um, psychiatric um, partners at the um, services board. And we've learned to ask, which is something I never did, even though I've done healthcare for 35 years. I didn't come in and say, are you depressed? Be unless they came in saying they were. Now I know to go looking for it. And that's been a, a godsend because I can intervene more appropriately. We find, uh, with, with research to back it up, that if you address mental health issues uh, responsibly, that actually your ability to handle your diabetes or your COPD or your high hypertensions or whatever you may have is also enhanced. So uh, you cannot really address chronic disease unless you're gonna deal with any behavioral health issue as well. The collaborative also helps clinics provide another key to better health prescription medications. Sherry and Eric Colbert found themselves facing a daunting variety of chronic illnesses and financial distress. They turned to Lackey Free Clinic for help. Working in cooperation with RX Partnership, another collaborative participant, the clinic treated their illnesses and prevented them from having to choose between life-saving prescription drugs and food. I'm on high blood pressure medicine, cholesterol, um, well, butrin, which is an antidepressant, and um, I suffered from anxiety too, so, um, uh, and also pain. So they've given me um, tremendous help with the prescriptions. I mean, there's no way we could even afford it if it wasn't for Lackey Clinic because I think they add up to around the $2,000 mark a month. Mm -hmm. So um, it would be impossible, and this was just a God-sent blessing, this clinic, because um, there's no way in the world I could afford that. Rx Partnership started in 2003 in order to really address the needs of the population who are seeing um, doctors at free clinics or community health centers and need to be able to have the medication to treat their chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, asthma, COPD. These are the kinds of things that without the medication it really undermines the work of those doctors who are volunteering their time. So we ensure that the shelves are stocked at these free clinic pharmacies and pay Patients can more easily and quickly get what they need in order to manage their conditions effectively. Have you seen an ophthalmologist at all yes. for that? Yes. Okay. Lessons learned through the collaborative and directly improves community health. By stretching resources, the clinics are able to operate efficiently and Here's serve patients more patients. Thank you. Every provider Welcome. is going to be forced to find the most innovative and efficient ways of dealing with chronic illness. They're going to need to learn from each other because so many aspects of this care model are small things that if you do them once, you may save a dollar or a minute of time. But if you do them a thousand times or 10,000 times or 100,000 times, you're talking about serious savings. This is your new blood pressure hypertension medication. Efficiencies created through collaborative participation also have direct benefits for other healthcare resources in the community. Underneath that visible level of leadership, you see volunteers and paid staff in these clinics who are doing heroic things every day. The commitment and the passion there are incredible. Honestly, it makes me feel like I'm in the presence of very heroic people. It's just the right thing to do to show compassion, restore dignity, make people feel good about themselves 
for a sect of our community, which is often kind of forgotten about or downtrodden. That's what I think we do here.